50 shades darker than I am. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm about 50 shades darker than a white man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and we both have very beautiful children. My youngest son, for example, um, I always tease him about, I made you and you're Kate Brady, and he asked me once, he says, what did that mean? I said, your mother is from St. Michael's, uh, Portugal. Your dad is from Augusta, Georgia. Look at you, look at your complexion, look at your makeup. Do you look any different than a Cape Verdean or a Latino? So when you, Musa, even Wayne Ibn Musa Barboza, lectures on hybrids, there are many who you challenge their being. That's a challenge. But you are who you are. And you can explain what a hybrid is. What is a hybrid? Well, I, as most of my tapes, um, I have some information on it. But the synchronicity, you know, what we have in common. Uh, like you said, uh, only uh, your parents could have made the Cape Verdean. And I could say the same thing, only uh, I'm looking at it from another point of view. We both pick cotton. Absolutely. Okay. Well, and I mean, I did it through a chain gang. <laughs> you did it because you had to do it. Okay. Uh, it, it's things like this in common. Uh, for example, we both make two Uh You got a couple of sons. I, I got thirteen children, <laughs> and uh, my seven sons uh, they carry the name of Musa, like I'm carrying my father's name. Um, the thing about a hybrid or mixed blood and so forth. Uh, they don't belong to any camp. You know, they, they're like a chameleon. In most cases, that's <laughs> most of the Cape Verdeans of the past. Are, they're like chameleons. They were able to bounce from back and forth. So, uh, to give you a good picture of uh, what this is really all about, and I don't want to even get it tied into the conspiracy theories. This is fact. Um, this is all stuff well documented and I'll challenge anybody on it. Um, the Cape Verdean was actually made in the Cape Verde Islands for a purpose. There was no, um, uh, how you say, mixing because they loved each other. It was mixing the, uh, through a ritual. Um, and these people that founded Cape Verde, uh, they built castles, uh, citadels, fortresses, cathedrals on this tiny island to create a school um, to try to resurrect the mystery systems of uh, ancient times. And uh, they had good intentions uh, to establish what they call a new Jerusalem because the Muslims wouldn't allow them back in Africa. And they couldn't go back to Europe because they're not, they were free thinkers and pirates and explorers and the church didn't go for that. So the Roman Empire, which is the old world, and the so-called British Empire, which is supposed to be the new world, uh, they slipped away and said, let's go to America. And, uh, do a new hybrid experience, bring back some of them women, and produce a child. And this child will be loyal to us, okay? And it will have both languages and both people and so forth. And they were the ones they call them. Today, you'll hear them talk about Anunnaki and, and, and uh, um, uh, hybrids from alien. That's just a bunch of um, conspiracy theories, just like they say. If there's truth to it, then they, they would have the evidence put out. Now, I'm evidence for what happened there. Uh, this DNA mixing and it was intentional and was done through uh, secret societies and uh, free thinkers, illuminated ones. Today, uh, I think the word is Illuminati, but actually they're bankers. They're the they're, they're descendants of the Knights of the Crusades, they're descendants of the uh, Kabbalahs of the Jewish religion. And they carried wisdom with them, and they carried all the treasures they could possibly get, because, like I said, they were the first bank. The idea of having this hybrid child was to control the new man, the new man that Leonardo da Vinci talks about, the new man that John Dee talks about. Um, all this was well planned in advance, hundreds of years. And uh, the main thing was to create this death thing, this fear of death. And, I mean, the black plagues and all that killing and all that was going on in Europe was to put fear into man. That was It's all about fear. They can't control uh, a man that has no fear. And um, these Muslims <laughs> didn't have fear. And this is one of the reasons why they 
they eventually uh, got back with me, belonged to them. So they came to America uh, long before Columbus, uh, staked out the land to the, uh, um, in fact, there's a tower right here in Newport called the Newport Tower that was built by the St. Clair tribe, which was a uh, Knights of Christ. And um, they came out of Africa. They got their wisdom directly from Africa. And they also built a, on these grid lines of power, or electrical, uh, natural lines of energy that uh, they're quite aware of because they had knowledge of ancient uh, buildings and ancient science that we lost. Um, in these researchers today, you know, you'll find this new science called quantum. It's actually uh, back in the day called metaphysics. Well, these children were taught these things, and they were taught how to control the minds of the slaves, how to control the uh, um, culture and teachings and so on, etc., long before they came across to America. Now, the Spanish took the south, and the Portuguese took the north. And the Portuguese uh, were in a very, very uh, open commercial type attitude where the other ones, uh, they were into their beliefs, whatever religion, whatever beliefs that they had, uh, in, 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 you know, had adopted. And, uh, but they all had one thing in common, and that was slavery. Because uh, now they done killed off all the black slaves, uh, I mean, black Native Americans, and they got rid of all the culture and history that they could possibly get their hands on. Uh, all the way down where they met in the middle of America and killed them all off to the point now you had brown Indians on the East Coast. And anybody who looks at old pictures of uh, the Western Indians, they're black. And um, what I'm saying is not a racial thing. As far as skin tone, you can't go by that with the, the hybrid. The hybrid could look blonde hair, blue eyes. I have cousins like that. Um, it could be black and nappy headed or, or black with red hair. Uh, they come in every color. This is their coat of many colors. But I'm going to get back to you on this closing words. When they said, and I'm thinking in terms of Prince Henry, uh, he was the one that uh, more or less was the teacher in their esoteric schools and their monasteries of navigation and study of the stars. They, I think he's the one that really had the maps and the books of uh, the globe before the last you know, end of the world, they had the flood, and they had other catechisms, you know, so they'd taken advantage of fear, knowledge of fear, knowledge of all the mysteries, and they came to America to conquer America, and they brought the hybrid as a middleman, as a priest, or as Malcolm would call him, the house nigger. So I'm going to turn this over to you, that's what a hybrid is. A well, that's an excellent um, explanation of what a hybrid is, and what has happened in our culture, both Cape Verdean and African American cultures, you were talking about, we both have picked pick cotton. Well, that's true. I tell both of my sons now, if a mule was behind was scanning the camera, my picture would be all over the world. <laughs> and uh, we sometimes joke about it, but then we get serious about it. And I tell them about my life as being a child of Brown versus Board of Education and what that means to most people, if you don't know about Brown versus Board of Education. There were many brilliant men who fought that to the, ninth, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court, including um, deceased Justice Thurgood Marshall, um, Judge George Layton, who's a brilliant Cape Verdean lawyer, appointed to the uh, United States Appellate Court by a Republican President, uh, Gerald Ford, um, and it is absolutely amazing what kind of history that exists in Plymouth. But when it comes to the parting way site, blacks in Cape Verde own it. It is yours. It is yours to replicate. It is yours to do what you need to do historically as educationally. You and only you, along with Musa and I and the Andrews family and the blacks in Cape Verde and so all over Massachusetts and Rhode Island, we have something that most blacks or non-whites in America don't have. We have 27 acres, 27.9 acres of prime real estate to produce, to produce. Protected to by the Department of Interior, may I add. Absolutely. It was listed. Parting ways, the entire 106 acres were listed 
on the United States Department of Interior's uh, National Register of Historic Places in 1975. And if you visit the site, the emblem and the placement of the Departments of Labor's uh, certification and declaration is there. Um, it is something in this 21st century that African Americans and Cape Verdeans can be proud of. You have every right to be try proud of. You, We would encourage you to go to these websites, look at the information, research the information. It is yours, it is your children. Yeah, and then, then I would encourage them to go to their leaders that they've been listening to all these years, and their teachers and their scholars. Go to them and ask them why they don't know about this history, or they won't tell us about this history, because that's something that's uh, holding us back. Absolutely. Why is it that educators, black educators, including Dr. Keith Motley at UMass Dartmouth, that have all the research that was done on this, why is it people like Dr. Jean McCormick, the Chancellor of UMass here, why is it that the Secretary of State, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> William Galvin, why is it that the Massachusetts Historical Commission have taken this history, tried to bastardize it, tried to hide it? I can give you the answers. You can give them the answers. It's called political racism and intentional deliberate indifference against the black and Cape Verdean patriots, their contribution, and disrespect for the major contribution of African Americans, Cape Verdean Americans, Native Americans, and Latino Americans in this country and their contribution yes. to the world, the safety, and the freedoms we enjoy now. Yeah, and that, well, we, we're about to lose. <laughs> it's a big battle, you know, about the freedoms we have right now. But uh, as far as these veterans that uh, are the only ones I know of that never been uh, recognized. I mean, uh, they recognize the Buffalo soldiers and all the other wars. But th it this mystique that keeps the founding fathers, because that's what they were. They were the black founding fathers of this country. And their contribution uh, will, somehow is not recognized. So that's our job. That's what we're here to do. And the reason why I'm more uh, into the uh, descendants is because like I have a lot of kids. Let's face it, I've raised foster kids and met kids and um, uh, being a single dad for 25 years, um, I'm very sensitive to women's issues and I do a lot of interviews on uh, Afro-American and uh, Anglo because I recently did an interview with uh, a radio station out in uh, Norway, Sweden on the party ways and uh, race issues. See, I, I'm a firm believer that the race issue is over with the party of this project. I believe that if you go back to the root or the cause of the effect or the root of the problem, then you expose what was once secret or which was the foundation of the wrong. You know, the original sin of America was slavery, let's face it. Um, blacks don't want to talk about it, whites don't want to talk about it, they can't talk about it because they don't know the story. Right, this is why organizations, agencies, and political uh, uh, agendas to keep that story quiet, you know, because uh, they don't want no more than uh, what they put up there, and that's President Obama as a, a, a leader, uh, somebody like our sons or your daughters or whatever, uh, pop up on a dollar bill, it would destroy their image, and um, this is, like I said, I don't want it to be a race issue, but all Americans uh, have a duty. They have a responsibility to their children. I, I know they don't care about themselves. And uh, most of them are afraid to lose their jobs, lose their position, uh, to become uh, isolated from their um, elite uh, you know, status in the, co in the community. And, and they're deliberately uh, misleading or withholding this information. So I put together the Rhode Island First Fatherhood Group several years ago, back right after 9-11, uh, not militant in terms of violence, but militant in terms of security, uh, because that's the uh, masculine energy that I mustered up to do this, you know, conflict, this resistance to re-enslavement, 
And picking Rhode Island uh, was more than uh, a coincidence, because uh, I was back here in 72, and I actually started the Nation of Islam Temple on Prairie Ave, uh, that's still there today, but uh, hasn't accomplished much since I left. Uh, the idea that the Nation of Islam or the Shriners or the Masons or these organizations that everybody's wealthy about, I mean, they all got good jobs and positions. Urban leagues, and, and I've been to them all, and yet this is something they won't tackle. So my men are ready to deal with it, and this is a commitment uh, that I made to you that my men have uh, basically pledged to, to uh, uphold. Uh, we're going to repatriate. We're going to declare ourselves uh, free Americans, and we're going to go out there and take care of our families. And we don't have to tell you how, when, what, or whatever. But if you need a job. You can't provide for your family, call us. If you don't know what's going on, if you're confused, call us. If you into that conspiracy theory thing, don't worry about 2012. Because the only thing that's going to happen in 2012 is that America's going to wake up. Okay? And, and whatever we go through between now and then, and my personal belief is to bull crap, so to speak, make everybody uh, uh, fear, like their forefathers. That's the only way they can th rule through that fear. So everything that you watch, if it's negative, you're going to have fear. Don't let that cluster up in your brain cells. Wake up, realize that if they promote it, if you see it on TV, if you're reading it in their papers, if their celebrities are all sprouting and supporting it, then it's more than likely not going to help you. It's going to hurt you because it hasn't helped you so far. So this is my mission here in Rhode Island. But parting ways is one movement. African Americans in Cape Verde must understand as to Jews who are persecuted in the 20th century understand is that no one is going to do for you what you are unwilling to do for yourself. Black men, Cape Verdean men, need to stand up and be men. There are examples that we can give, but they will remain nameless because um, they know who they are with PhDs in almost every subject, but are non-men. Do not have any sense of responsibility to the overall family, the Black and Cape Verdean family, which nurtured you and supported you and guided you to a group of success. Black and Cape Verdeans through the competition of life had always to be as good or even better than your competitor who was white because as Malcolm said years ago before he died and it is true today a nigga with a PhD is still a nigga. And if you accept that as your as that role, the subservient role, and you are going to be a 21st century slave on a plantation, that is not going that is your choice. Musa, I parting ways. KVerdian.net, Rhode Island Fatherhood, uh, Maurice Barbosa and the Liberty Fund, we are going to stand up and be men. It is our responsibility. Musa has 13 kids, grandkids, and I'm pretty sure great grandkids coming along. So I have children and kids and great grandkids. I have a responsibility as a man. And they think we're going to die off. This is the key thing. Now. We found out something. We, we, we actually stumbled in on some of our ancient uh, secret bloodlines. And, you know, these people didn't believe in that. In fact, they chose the moment of farming one of the original plants. And they finished it. Whatever it is that their goal was, they accomplished it. And I'm telling you right now, you can get, get off that video game, that television, the newspapers, and realize that the schools have taken and raised your children and indoctrinated them to, to be slaves. And I mean slaves to the point where you get up in the morning and all you can think about is them getting to their job. 
you know, or paying their bills, and so forth, etc. You'll find that everything you do is for them. So I'm giving you a little advice. Uh, next nine months, start today. Go out and plant some flowers, some food, get close to nature, take your kids to the park, get closer and closer, because they're saying to me, anyway, that there's, uh, there's a lot of those people going to be depopulated. Uh, well, that stuff isn't new. It's been going on. You know, King Alfred plan in the 60s, uh, Rex 84 in the 80s, and Agenda 21 in the 21st century. And I'm going to give it to you straight up. The only people they're going to get are you, because you don't know what's going on. You're busy in the world, and you haven't even took a book to your hand and read it. If you read a book that was probably a non-fiction, I mean a fictional, or a science fiction, and it didn't have nothing to do with your people. So it's not that we're racist and we're not mentioning white people because America, I don't think there's an American left that doesn't have some kind of black blood in them. If they don't, they're soon going to have it. It's just the way the numbers is. And, 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 and I'm saying this because race shouldn't be the issue. We now should talk about our freedoms. We, we should talk about not only our freedoms, surviving a sinister plan to depopulate us here in America to destroy the republic that we fought for and to just totally uh, bring us into a, a refugee uh, third world status and uh, they can't do that. They, it's all illegal, it's all illusion. We'll let the lawyers and stuff that when they wake up, let them fight it. Uh, we'll let the soldiers, which I'm very in touch with, uh, I, they tell me they're not going to turn their guns on their people. So their plan isn't working, you know. But one thing is, neither are the listeners uh, to these shows and these news networks. To get in touch with us, contact uh, kateverdian.net, pottingways.org, and Rhode Island First Fatherhood dot info. Uh, if you don't have a pen, just Google in my name, Wayne Barboza or Eddie Johnson, but don't put the baseball player, please. <laughs> the basketball uh, we're, player. <laughs> we're, coming, we're coming into the last two minutes here. And uh, I want you to, uh, what's your message to... My, my message to African Americans and Cape Verdeans, if you're a, a part of this listening audience, if you go to our website, as Musa just gave them to you, I'm going to give them to you again, www.capeverdean.net, www.partingways, all one word, dot org, www.libertyfund dot org you can educate yourself your children your neighbors your friends and everything that you find there i am sure it is something there that you did not know about you will find some of the greatest african americans and cape verdeans contribution contributors to the world to cape bird to government, to military, you name it, we claim it from science. <laughs> past, past, present, proud. and future. Past, present, and future. And, and on, on that Facebook, note, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitter. Please go. All of those sites have Facebook and Twitter. And on that note, from me, I want to thank my dearest and my best friend, Wayne Evan Musa Barboza, for inviting me to share in conversation with him and hope that you will take this as a positive trip, Go a positive to review, my head. and a proud review of your and ancestors, of your children, of your poor parents, and of your future. And I find Have a you great and wonderful, not day, but life. Okay, thank you, idiot. And like thanks for calling. Um, I'll get back to you after the show. Uh, in closing, I want to tell everybody out in the audience, um, don't be afraid uh, to call. You or to contact go us to my uh, head. Or websites or any way you can. Uh, like a very important thing. And if you don't know about it, you might be one of the victims in your family. You know, you know, and if I you. find uh, the very mention of you, to be in touch. It's very important. Like a All right, with that, I'll say yeah, good night. God bless. Uh, Queen Bobo, signing off. Be very good on that. Thank you. The thrill of the thought that you might give a thought.